I'll give you an example. Rav Moshe Feinstein, Zatzal, after the war in Vietnam, there was a war. Some of the Jews were in the army. So one woman came to him one day with a paper. She came with a paper. She said, Rabbi, don't ask what just happened. So he, she, she said to him, you gave me permission to get married after the war, based on the testimonies of other soldiers. And my husband just came back from prison in Vietnam. And she got remarried. So she has the paper from the bed in of Rav Moshe Feinstein. Now Rav Moshe Feinstein sits here and she sits over there. He doesn't even see the paper. She's holding a piece of paper in her hand. He told her, I never gave you any permission to get married. It's a lie. He said, what do you mean, Rabbi? I was here a few years ago. Here is the paper of the Bedin here. He told her, I never gave it to you. It's a lie. Going back and forth, she broke. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're right. You never gave it to me. She has a paper with us. With us in. The paper was fake. Fake. I don't know how she got it, and she has connection. She has a fake paper from the bed dean that she's allowed to get married. So when she left, his helper asked him, Rabbi, how are you so sure? I mean, hundreds of people come to us every week, and it's been years ago. We don't remember all the people who were here, one case after the other. He answered, he cannot be that for the mitzvah that I give my life for, to help agunot, women that will not stay alone for the rest of their life, and I work so hard to find and to investigate, and I do it with my free time. I am not asking anything in return. So I come to help Hashem that his children will not be miserable, and he's going to make me fail? What's the point? Make a fool out of me? I give my life for it. He knew he cannot be. Why? Because he knew he does it 100% the right way. Same thing with him, another famous story, that one time someone came to his apartment, lived in Lower East Side, Manhattan. He came to him and said, Rabbi, a Jewish boy just got killed under him, right here, on the floor, on the street, on the road. He said to him, cannot be. He said, Rabbi, what do you mean cannot be? Is Yamaka is still next to the body? Is the Yamaka on the floor? He told him, go and double check, cannot be. He said to him, Rabbi, a Jewish boy, the, the neighborhood is full of Jews. A car ate a boy, and the Yamaka is on the floor. He said, do you mind going and check again? This person went down. Ten minutes later, he came back. He said, I just cannot believe it. How did you know that it's not a Jew? How did you know? Do you know what happened? A Jew was running, and a guy was chasing him to hit him. The Jew made it. While he was running, his Yamaka fell. He made it, and the car came and hit the goy. So the body next to the Yamaka is a non-Jew that was chasing the Jew to hurt him. So he said to Moshe Feinstein, but how did you know? You never came downstairs. Well, you have Ruach HaKodesh, you have a prophet. Well, so he told him, it cannot be that under my apartment that I give my life to learn Torah non-stop here, that a Jewish boy will die right under me? Can't be. Five blocks away, maybe, yes. Different city, yes. But here, in my territory, the neighborhood, and I'm a rabbi over there, it cannot be. Why? That's show when you are for the sake of heaven and you do the right thing, the chance that something like this will come to you is almost zero. There's always things that we not always know the answer, of course, but at least you minimize the chance.